Hello class, I decided to create a mind mapping video for this chapter to help you recall the details and especially get the bigger picture of our video lectures. I hope that this will help you prepare well for your midterm exam. This technique also communicates how my thought process is when teaching you this chapter. Okay, let's begin. I would start by deciding which test to use. So we would first determine the parameter that we would like to test, whether it is new or proportion. So mu or p. Now if it's the proportion that we are interested to test, we would definitely use the normal distribution. If you are interested in testing the mu, we would have to refer to the sample size. When the sample size is large, then we definitely choose the normal distribution. When the sample size is small, we have two choices. If the sigma is provided, we would use the normal distribution. And if we only know the value of the sample standard deviation, we would use the t distribution. And that's how easy it is to determine the test that we are interested in. We also need to consider which method that is specified in the question. If the question asks you to use the p-value method, then you should only use the p-value method. Otherwise, you would be using the traditional critical value method. I would discuss the traditional method first. In the traditional method, to determine the rejection region, we are always interested in the alternative hypothesis. So if the alternative says that your parameter is less than something, you would use a left tail test. If the alternative wants to test that the parameter is greater than a value, you would use the right tail test. And if the alternative wants to test for the difference, then you'd be using a two tail test. This point here would be your critical point and this would be your alpha. And in this case, alpha would be divided by 2. So once you get your test statistics, you would then place your test statistics on this distribution here and determine whether it falls in the rejection region or non-rejection region to make a decision about your hypothesis. The p-value takes a different approach. The most important statement that you have to memorize is we reject the null hypothesis if the p-value is less than alpha. So this is your decision criteria. Next, to find the p-value, again, you have to check for the alternative hypothesis. If it's less than, then your p-value would be the probability of z less than the test statistics. Either positive or negative depending on the test statistics. If the alternative is greater than, then the p-value would be the probability of z greater than the test statistics. And if the alternative is not equals to a value, then you either take 2 times the probability of z less than the test statistics, but please ensure that this is a negative value. Or you could use the formula of 2 times the probability of z greater than the positive value of the test statistics. You have to ensure that this is positive. Okay class, that's all for this mind mapping session. 
Thank you for your attention and I'll see you in the next video lecture.